Oh my god. <laughs> oh my GoPro picked that up. Hey officer, it's a car and not a plane. I promise you that. Hey look, I'm telling you guys this right now. I don't know if my GoPro pricked that up, but if it did, I just literally drove by two cops that were just like sitting outside the car, or technically standing outside the car, and they all just looked straight at me as I drove by. If I was back in Illinois, I would have 110% got lit up, 100%. You know, knock on all the plastic in here right now that they don't turn around, but oh my God, dude, this car, like people literally, <laughs> Like it's Texas, man. I thought this was like, you know, normal activity out here. I guess not, maybe not where I'm at. I don't even know where I'm at, to be honest with you. my spot so we can go ahead and get on with this video it is actually crazy windy today hell of a day to record this video I've just been super super busy and every single time I tried to record this video the past couple days was just a complete fail so hopefully today is the day catch you guys in the drive and then when we get to the spot Yo, welcome back to the channel everyone. Now for this video, I kind of want to explain why I went with a Vortex Supercharger over a Pro Charger for my 99 to 04 New Edge Mustang GT. I will also give you guys some tips and advice on what you guys should potentially do if you are looking to go the supercharger route for forced induction for this platform. Now, I'm putting this out there right now, I have a Vortec V1 T-Trim Supercharger. This is a rather large head unit. It's a little bit bigger than the V2 and the V3, and it could put out a little bit more horsepower. And I actually bought this used from a local for a very good price. So that's gonna be a huge reason as to why I went ahead and picked up a Vortec. Prices and everything, 
honestly it's going to be going down to personal preference and what power number you guys are trying to achieve that being said if you guys are trying to push more than 600 wheel horsepower i actually recommend you guys going with a pro charger as a supercharger because more often than not they are going to be producing out more horsepower as well as they're going to be a complete system with an intercooler intercoolers are super important for this platform especially if you guys are trying to go over 400 wheel horsepower without actually having to run meth or e85 just in case that stuff is not available in your area now for the pro chargers these are going to be, like I said, complete systems with the head unit, the intercooler, the blow-off valve, as well as all of the piping. For Vortex superchargers, a lot of the time when you guys are trying to buy these new or used, especially used, a lot of people just get the head unit and they do not go ahead and intercool the system because maybe they're only trying to push 380 to 400 wheel horsepower. Now, if you guys are only caring about pushing 400 wheel horsepower max, I actually recommend you guys going ahead and going with a Vortex supercharger because you're going to be able to hit that very easily depending on the pulley you're running and especially if you guys are intercooled. Now, the system that I I have is a Vortec V1T trim and it does have an intercooler. It has the CX Racing intercooler which is pretty decent. It's good for about 550 wheel horsepower but when I go ahead and get ready to you know turn this car up to 600 I'm going to be swapping this out for a Treadstone intercooler that can take me to that next step. The CX Racing intercooler is a decent option. Like I said if you guys are not trying to push big power but you are going to lose some boost so you're going to have to pull it down accordingly rel relatively you know accommodating for the two to three maybe even four psi loss that you might get with this intercooler so definitely go ahead and keep that in mind if you guys are trying to look for a new or a used vortex non-intercooled system but going ahead and trying to pick up a CX Racing intercooler. If I were you guys, if I was going to do this, you know, from the start and I did not get a good deal on a used system, I'd go ahead, if I wanted to only push 400, 450 max, go ahead and get that Vortex Supercharger, but pick up a Treadstone intercooler so you guys are not losing out on a lot of PSI lost through that intercooler. But if you guys try to go for those big horsepower numbers, definitely go ahead and go with the Pro Charger system specifically the D1SC head unit so you guys can push a little bit bigger power but if you guys just want to go ahead and go with the pro charger route altogether that P1SC head unit is going to very easily be able to put you at 400 to 450 wheel horsepower with the corresponding pulley because it is intercooled and those systems typically do output more horsepower per boost over the Vortex systems. Now, the reason I went ahead again and bought a Vortex V1 supercharger is because I got a very good deal. I got the head unit, I got the intercooler, the piping, the blow-off valve, the loud blow-off valve that you guys heard, the tile Q blow-off valve. I got all this for around $2,000. So it was a very, very good deal, something that I could not go ahead and pass up on. Now, originally, I was actually looking for a D1SC Pro Charger. I was actually going to go ahead and buy one brand new. But these supercharger systems can range from six upwards to $10,000. Now, personally for me, a new edge Mustang GT can range from the prices of like four to six thousand dollars. Personally, I don't know about you guys, but a 20 year old car, I didn't really want to spend more money on a supercharger system straight up than the car was worth. I kind of wanted to go ahead and get a used kit just in case I did not like the supercharger. I did not just go ahead and waste ten thousand dollars because for ten thousand dollars. I can essentially go ahead and get the supercharger as well as buy a built short block to go ahead and push 6,000 or I should say 6,000. Wow, I'm getting way ahead of myself. 600 wheel horsepower and really enjoy the car. So that's just kind of my reasoning behind it. I think a lot of us are the same way. I know a lot of people on Facebook forums are always like, dude, why are you spending like $10,000 on a supercharger system alone when you can buy one used and a built by the men for less than that? Doesn't really make any sense to me. I agree with that stuff as well, so definitely go ahead, and if you are trying to go ahead and get into the supercharger life of a, for a New Edge Mustang GT, go on those Facebook forums. People literally list these for like, you know, 
$2,500, $2,000, $3,000, $3,500 max for a Pro Charger setup. I know people sell D1SCs for $3,500. I saw one last month, probably one this month, the next after that. Honestly, every single week somebody is selling, whether it is a Vortec V1, V2, V3, or a Pro Charger P1SC or a D1SC. I only saw like an F1X before. Every single week something is getting listed. So if you guys are trying to boost your car and you want to spend, let's say, $4,000 max for everything, definitely go ahead and jump on those Facebook pages, you know, New Edge Mustang Parts, 9904, you know, Mustang GT Parts. You're going to be very, very uh, easily be able to cop something and, you know, be boosted. So I want to go ahead and just make a video kind of explaining why I went ahead and made my decision to pick up a Vortec supercharger over a Pro Charger and also give you guys some tips on what you guys should be looking for and what you guys should be, you know, going after depending on your horsepower number. I'm gonna go ahead, pop the hood. It's super windy outside, which is why I'm recording this video inside the car. Kind of show you guys exactly what I'm working with. And, um,. Like I was saying, it is super, super windy outside, which is why I'm recording this in the car. Go ahead and show you guys exactly what I'm working with, and uh, yeah. All right, so as you guys can see here, here's the Vortex Supercharger. It's a V1 T trim. There is the tile blow-off valve right there. And as you guys can see here, I have a CX Racing intercooler down there. I am gonna be upgrading to a Treadstone intercooler. It's pretty much just a full exhaust, supercharged car. You can kind of see over here, you can see it. I have BBK long tube headers. I'm actually gonna go under the car for you guys. See it. You guys can see it down there, BBK long tube headers, off-road X-pipe. And then we got the boiler attack cat back, so the car is definitely loud. And I think it sounds pretty good, especially with that blow-off valve. Definitely get a lot of looks. <laughs> People are like, yo, what the hell is all that? But yeah. All right, so now I'm just gonna give you guys a startup on idle so you guys can hear what the Vortex sounds like. Now the one thing you guys are going to notice is whenever I start the car up the AFRs are kind of lean and then after it like idles for a little bit it does kind of just correct itself. It's probably because currently when I actually had the car tuned prior there actually was a major exhausting with the shorty headers. I went and swapped those over to long tube headers so it takes a little bit for the car to kind of just adjust and here it goes right now kind of adjusting going back to that 14.7 mark to the 15 mark. It's going to quickly adjust over to that 14 mark but I want to just go ahead and put that out there we go so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video kind of want to go ahead and give you guys you know my thoughts and opinions on the supercharger why I went with it this car right now with the actual technically lean tune that it was on it before swap back to the original tune that was with the short tube headers it made around 410 400 that was with the exhaust leak but I've raced a couple cars. I raced a full bolt time E85 Gen 1 Coyote, as well as a gutted Catless Scat Pack. And um, I mean, I don't think this car makes 410. I think it makes a little bit more than that. Uh, definitely a little bit more than that. 
I'm gonna get on the dyno, actually get it retuned, and we're gonna find out exactly what this car actually does make. I have a 2.87 pulley in the car, so with that in mind, with the exhaust leak, I think this car probably is gonna push out around like 430, 440 maybe, but we'll see. Hope you guys do enjoy, and uh, make sure you guys drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and also turn on those post notifications. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Deuces!